Welcome back to In the Shade. I'm Jenny Wilson. And I'm Isabel Ancella. And this is our fifth episode. Woo. Number lucky number five. Is number five a lucky number? For us it is. Sure. I know. We're like, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. It's been really awesome hearing everyone's feedback and just knowing that there are people listening to us. Yes, honestly. Like, I mean, I saw we had an Apple podcast review, too. Ooh. I know, it's like pretty crazy. And it's not from us. Yeah, it's not, I know, it's not from us. <laughs> it is not from us, but a legit five-star review that we definitely plan That's on so cool. kind of like I maybe reading know or something. About that. Yeah, isn't that kind of crazy? That's like, awesome. We're, we're, we're grinding, we're doing it, you know, so we really appreciate the support. Yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, just as a reminder, uh, we're, uh, recording in the shade, uh, to bring awareness for BIPOC people that have gone missing, but also we discuss, um, BIPOC individuals that are convicted murderers. Um, so we're kind of, uh, wanting to represent the both sides of, of the spectrum, uh, and then another disclaimer just about this episode specifically, it's going to be a very disturbing and graphic one. So don't let your kids listen to this because it's, it's kind of gnar. Yeah. So this is our brief summary. This episode is about the incestuous patriarch, Marcus Wesson. <sighs> Wesson murdered nine of his children slash grandchildren because he believed that he was Jesus and that if anyone tried to separate the family, then Marcus Wesson said, we would all go to heaven. And by we would all go to heaven, I mean, he was about to pow pow in that, you know, like house, like he's bringing out whatever gun he has, whatever firearm, and he was ready to shoot something up, people. Um, The police discovered nine bodies varying in age from 25 to one. the episode off with kind of discussing who Mark and Wesson is. He um, dropped out of high school and then joined the army serving from 1966 to 1968 and also served as an ambulance driver. Shortly after leaving the military, he actually moved in with an older woman named Rosemary Solorio uh, and her eight children. And this happened in San Jose, California. Um, soon after, like, moving in, Solorio gave birth to Wesson's son, um, and so they had their first child. But the creepiest part about this situation is that (sighs) he actually began sexually abusing her eight-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, eight years old. It's so, like, that's just, like, so messed up. It's really disturbing. (sighs) He then ended up marrying Elizabeth eight-year-old daughter when she turned 14 and he at that time was 27 and then four months later she gave birth to their first child and then eventually they would have 10 children together including one infant uh that died um really uh interesting is also that elizabeth's younger sister uh left her own children seven of them, uh, with Wesson and Elizabeth, claiming to be unable to care for them because she had a drug problem. Oh, gosh. So he and Elizabeth were taking care of their ten children, including her seven. This is like a a full house. A lot of kids. Um, And then to, you know, step it up a notch because, you know, marrying an eight-year-old wasn't enough. He actually also maintained incestuous relationships with his daughters, the daughters he had with Elizabeth. Um, and those daughters' names are Kiani and Sabrina. And in, in addition to his daughters, he also had um, relationships with his nieces, Rosa and Sofina Solorio, who are um, Elizabeth's sisters' okay, okay. children. Um, And also Ruby Ortiz. Okay. Um, And then because incestuous relationships Uh, aren't enough, we can, you know, always take it up a notch. 
He then also ended up marrying two of his daughters and three of his nieces and then produced more children with them. This is getting so dark. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm like. We went from zero to 100. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm-hmm. I had to get a sip of water because I was like, that is just getting so dark. Can you tell us a little bit more about Wesson and how he kind of treated his family? Sure. Are you prepared for it? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. So Wesson, like, he never really held a steady job, and he lives off welfare, a.k.a. the system, um, which, again, is totally fine. But what wasn't fine about his situation was um, what he kind of did next. So check this out. Um, so his, okay, so he had his hardworking adult children give him all their earnings, all their, like, welfare money that they were getting from the government. He demanded they give it to him. So not only are they not able to utilize that money for themselves, like food, um, for like school supplies and things like that, he demanded that they give their welfare money to him. Okay. So in 1989, Weston was convicted of welfare fraud and perjury. Am I surprised? No. I mean, look, look, look at this man. Um, mm-hmm. So the family often lived in rundown shacks, boats, and vacant houses, and um, the occasional bus every now and then. Weston was abusive towards his wife and children. He prevented Elizabeth from participating in the children's upbringing, which is completely messed up. Even as, like, a young child, you need that, like, you need your mom. Because just, like, you know, like, she, like, she literally held these children. Like, she gave birth to them. You know, the ones that were her biological children, the other ones that, you know, her sister dropped off. But... That's just a lot. I don't know. This just really messed up or how shows how controlling he was. The girls were not allowed to talk to their male siblings on their um, or their mother. So both male and female children were physically abused, which is 100 percent fucked up. Wesson raped two daughters and three nieces beginning at the age of eight. So he has a thing for eight year olds. Eight year olds. That's also when he started. Ah, that's right. You know, yeah, uh, getting into things with his like, yeah, wife. Is, yeah, at eight. And then that's just like so messed up. So each of the five girls became pregnant as a result. How disturbing is that? It's so bad. That's it's like so bad. really, really bad. Like, I mean, I don't know what else to say besides it's so like. Gross. It's so gross. It's, it's so like just. Ah, God. Ah, it's really gross. He homeschooled the children and taught them from his own handwritten Bible that focused on Jesus Christ being a vampire. And no, that is not a joke. He literally taught them from his own handwritten Bible that focused on Jesus Christ being a vampire. He told the children that he was God and had them refer to him as master or Lord. They were also taught Bible study and happened, you know, ironically enough they're taught in the school bus <laughs> all of these like learnings and bible study school work and so on oh like, in a school bus like in an actual like oh yeah like God. school bus like a rundown like bus but like and i i put the quotes like school bus so because he turned they turned it into a school yeah he turned it into like a school that's so weird yeah, and it was like he also raised his sons differently from his daughters and i think you may know a little bit more about that than yeah, i do yeah so he as you already mentioned, he raised the children separately. Like, all the boys were in mm-hmm. one place and all the girls were on in one place. And he actually had really troubled relationships to his sons at, as well. Uh, he abused them. And some of his uh, sons have said that they were mortally afraid of him and... Uh, there were times where they would just not speak at all because they were so scared of him and they would just defecate in their pants and he would <sighs> beat them so much that some of them just wouldn't walk for a week because the beatings were so bad <sighs> and they were just in so much pain. Oh my gosh. Another one of his sons who now lives in Fresno and works as a security guard said that um, they were essentially brainwashed, and without knowing it, he basically had an invisible gun to their heads, and it just really prevented them from ever speaking up or trying to stop him because they were just afraid that he would literally kill them. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and 
can you tell us a little bit more about how he treated the daughter? Yeah, I, I just like don't. Before that, I just like had a recollection. How do you like take this abuse out on like my like literally babies? Like an eight year old, in my opinion, although it's not like a baby that you can swaddle, it's a legit baby, like innocent child. Mm -hmm. how, like, do you think something may have happened to me to him when he was like in the army, or what do you think? Because this yeah, I mean, maybe behavior is crazy. Maybe something happened to yeah. to him in the army or as a child, or maybe he had just really troubling mental health yeah. issues that just never got addressed. Which is, like, really sad, especially, I feel like, amongst, like, black and brown communities, like, really forcing, or not forcing, but paying attention to mel mental health is so crucial. It's yeah. something that, you know, we're finally starting to talk about. But, like, I love therapy. I have a therapist. Like, I think I'm all yeah. here for it, you know? So it's kind of like something that we need to like really start normalizing but i'll go ahead and start and let you guys know how like these daughters were treated but um so the daughters were i mean okay let me back up so he taught all of the children to be prepared for armageddon and said that the girls were destined to become weston's future wives his daughters were to become his wives and his nieces as well, And right? his nieces, yeah. yeah. Ugh. Ugh, that's like, I, I feel like I'm getting ill talking about this because yeah. it's just so sick. Um, and then Weston School curriculum involved teaching girls sexual acts as young as eight or nine years old. Their domestic responsibilities, including washing his dreads and scratching his armpits and his head. Like, can you imagine? So you have these children that are now servants, okay, essentially. Yes. Servants and, like, sex Yeah, like, workers. sex, yes, yeah, slaves, workers. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of just, like, you know something. Yeah, like, you like, like, we know right and wrong. So that's why I'm wondering if this is, like, a mental health kind of situation. Yeah. Because you know that's wrong. Like, you know you should not be doing that. But I just, uh, it just is really, just really, really honestly creepy. But... Even though he benefited from exploiting his children, how did nine of the children end up dead? Yes, yeah, so on March 12th, or let me back up. Um, before they ended up dead, Wesson announced to his whole family that he would move the whole family to Washington State because that's where oh. his parents were living or something yeah. like that. And so on March 12, 2014, his daughter, Ruby Wesson, and niece, Sophie Solorio, came with 13 other relatives and friends to claim custody of their seven-year-old children. And, yeah, so the, the, two, the daughter and the niece came, and they invited other relatives to help get those seven-year-old children out of his custody that makes sense and Get obviously he was like not ready to let go right. because you said uh that he has said if the family's broken up mm. he would um pow pow yeah, yeah they would go to heaven or whatever He's shooting and so up. an argument started um at the house and um the there was like a lot of commotion and Ruby and Sophie ended up calling the police who then arrived at the property to talk with Marcus. And then Wesson, uh, Marcus Wesson met the police at the door and he told them to wait. Um, but then he kind of like disappeared into the house. That's so weird. And then when he appeared at the door again, his clothes suddenly were covered in blood. And so the family and police, I guess, rushed into the house and they found nine of his children, including the babies of Ortiz and Solorio, mm -hmm. dead. Um, <clears throat> so when they went into the house, they saw that they were all shot in the eye and stacked in the bedroom. Oh, my gosh. Like on top of each other, kind of like logs or something. I don't know. <sighs> um and on top of all the children was his daughter, Sabrina, and um, also her own child as well. Oh, gosh. And, um, yeah, it just seems really horrible. 
and kind of strange that um, the police was there, but he still had the opportunity to shoot all those children, n- mm. nine children. Yeah. It seems odd to be able to do that while the police is there and right. to stack them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like that. None of that makes like, cause obviously the police aren't going to be like hanging outside for like hours and hours. So he came back like in a relatively like appropriate time period, I'm assuming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like, gosh. yeah. Like I feel like the children probably were dead before the niece and, um, daughter called the police Mm -hmm. yeah because i feel like it's like it should be more time consuming to like shoot nine people right and then pick them up and stack them yeah and it's weird too because like did how do you hear that like how do you not hear that like nine bullets went off and they were all and the police wouldn't just like wait after the first shot no they wouldn't have waited at all so it kind of makes you wonder like were they dead before they got there yeah you know like but then also, too, like, the weird part to me that's, like, fucking strange is, like, you answer the door without a bloody shirt, and then you come back with a bloody shirt on. We're all going to be like, gee, what just happened? Mm. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. kind of like, did you have something to do with it that, like, you helped her? Or, I like, I don't know. But something yeah. just doesn't, I guess something just does not feel There's right. There's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of gaps. The murder. Yeah, and things just don't make sense. So, I mean, I mean, the trial, I guess we can kind of discuss that interesting case. Because you and I were reading the police report, and that's when we were like, wait, this doesn't make sense. Because how does this make sense? Because even in the police report, it says that the police did not hear anything. Yeah, the police didn't hear anything. But um, some of the other relatives claim to have heard shots. Which, which is, like, weird, though, right? Yeah. Like, even if they heard shots, wouldn't you tell the cop that's near you? Yeah. Hey, dude, I heard shots. Exactly. Unless, because, um, <laughs> unless they were so brainwashed that they felt like if they snitched on their quote-unquote dad that, like, something bad would happen. You know, like, mm-hmm. what do you think? Because, like, is it a... Because if I'm, like, their age, and I'm, like, eight, nine or something, and I, like, heard gunshots, do you protect your dad? Even though it's an yeah. incestuous situation? And he, well, like, these are, them? like, older yeah. children. And in, in these, like, Ruby and... Um, what was her name? Ruby and Sophie, mm-hmm. they weren't living with him anymore. They, like... Right. abandoned him so they might not be under his brain his like brainwash power. spell yeah um so it just seems really interesting that they're saying they died yeah in that moment but from a timeline perspective it doesn't it seem doesn't to make sense up. yeah nothing's like adding up or making sense because <laughs> even if we like um start talking about the trial that is that like that is just weird. Cause mm-hmm. That's when we kind of started putting pieces together. Like something's not quite adding mm-hmm. up. So, for example, the trial, right? Like we'll just get into it. At Weston's trial, they presented the defense that his 25-year-old daughter, Sabrina, committed all the murders, including of her son, Marshy, and then committed suicide. Okay, so that's like one thing that we were like, I don't know. The murder weapon, a 22 caliber handgun, was found with her body, and Sabrina's DNA was found on the gun, which lent credence to Weston's claim. The jury declined to find that Weston fired the fatal shots, that's fair, but convicted him of murder anyway, presumably finding that he had persuaded his children to enter into a suicide pact. So, okay. Let's unpack this. Yeah, let's digest that Mm -hmm. and unpack that. Do you think that she killed all, all of them? Um, but she, I mean, Sabrina. So, something interesting that they also wrote in the um, police report was that all the children that were dead were shot in, I think, the left eye. Yeah. Except mm-hmm. for her son, who was shot in the right eye. Right. Which, 
I don't know. That could be an indicator that like she was maybe favoring her or yeah. you know wanted her son to stand out. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe she didn't do it. Or maybe she didn't do it. Yeah. Or maybe she I didn't mean, actually do it. He still had a bloody shirt, so he had something to do with this. Yeah. Whether it's shooting them or moving the bodies, right? Um, or brainwashing them to to exactly. the suicide pact. I w- also, too, let me know if your thoughts on this theory. <laughs> what if, like, okay, so he answered the door, right? Mm-hmm. What if he, like, purposely came back with, um, like, blood all over him to say, like, oh, my gosh, my daughter, com- like, committed suicide and killed everybody. Do you think maybe that's also, like, what he was thinking when he showed up in a bloody shirt? Or do you uh, think he was just mindless? Like, he Yeah, was just, that like, could have been it, too. Because they, like, they were clearly already dead. Because weren't some of, and we won't get too graphic, but... And the police report talks about how some of the bodies were warm and some of them weren't, but majority of them were still warm. So it was kind of like recent, but also uh, we were telling us earlier, when you die, you don't just like instantly turn cold. It's like a slow, gradual process. Yeah. So I'm wondering if like he did that. It's like, oh, this is going to help me in my case. I'm going to show up and just – with a bloody shirt like that just doesn't make any or what are your thoughts on that i don't know i mean it it definitely is an interesting thought like maybe he did yeah maybe he did bloody his shirt to yeah. make it seem like maybe he struggled with sabrina or something but ah okay okay oh, okay um, okay i can see okay but it could have also you know, just been his negligence because he moved the bodies, and so that's why he was bloody. Ah, okay, okay, Um, that makes sense. I guess it's, like, the part that's so weird to me is, like, the reference of the stacked bodies. Yeah. Like, that is, like, really fucked up. It's really messed up, and it's just, like, really messing with the timeline, honestly. Yeah. It's, like, I don't know. It's, like, I can't, like, wrap my mind around it, and... You know, like, me as, like, an analyst, my overall job is to, like, no matter what, ask questions, but always figure out the why. And I can't figure out the why factor of this. And I, it's really hard to, like, analyze because there's so many different kind of, like, like, nav, uh, like, areas and directions that you can go with this, like, kind of situation because we don't. Yeah. We don't know because we And honestly, there. the police report is not that clear no, either. It was almost like reading the police report. It was almost kind of like reading, like, n- no shade, but like an article from BuzzFeed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't sound. I, I feel that. It, it wasn't, like, as professional as I kind of would have thought reading it. Like, And it didn't seem very, like, chronological No, either. it didn't. It's, yeah. It was w- we'll was link weird. it, and y'all let us know what your thoughts are on this police report. Yes. Yeah, so that that part was, like, really weird. But, yeah, um, I definitely think it's interesting that they basically blamed Sabrina for the murders. Yeah. Um, When clearly he had some impact on that. Yeah, he had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. And I guess, like, also, too, the part where, um, oh, that part in the police report where somebody mentions... Oh, I heard gunshots, but then I didn't hear gunshots. That's another thing that, like, I know you um, that you touched on, but that part was like weird too because they said they heard them and they never actually heard them. But then another part, other people are like, "Oh, we heard them. We were frantic." But then the police officers are like, "We heard nothing." Yeah. So that part was like, <laughs> it just doesn't really add up. Yeah, unless the police are lying, which I mean, another avenue, uh, like another avenue. But I don't think in this situation that they would lie about hearing gunshots they would they would clearly say that they heard something yeah. right yeah yeah i wonder why if there weren't gunshots i wonder why the family would make up hearing them right like that part doesn't make any sense to me it's almost kind of like we're never really going to know because he like all nine of them are dead and even like the children that did speak out it's almost kind of like they were like they, they were ready to talk about it, but so apprehensive about it because it was a very traumatic experience. Yeah. As you know, and they they were brainwashed, so they don't know. Yeah, like how this might like look in the media and stuff like that. Exactly, because like, people I'm, could perceive them as being the bad guys because exactly. they did participate in some of these crimes. Exactly, and, and again, even going back to the police po- <laughs> police report where it references. 
um, like some of the children's names. And it's like, well, how could she have heard this? And it's kind of like, okay, well, now you're like you putting that in there is already giving that person like a reputation of being a liar, Mm -hmm. even though they may have just been scared in that moment and have been like kind of coerced to say something, you know, because sometimes like the feds can do that. But I mean, we don't know necessarily, but the whole thing is just very, very weird. And it's not quite clear because it just does not make sense. The only thing that does make sense is I do believe that he thinks that Jesus was a vampire. I do believe that. And I do believe <laughs> that he thinks he was God. Like, yeah, the way that this man is kind of, his brain is kind of set set up. But it's just so sad to see, like, to take th- these things out on, like, innocent children and then to, like, like, he was reproducing with his own family. Yeah, with his children and grandchildren. That is and so his nieces. It's just like, it's so disgusting. I can't. I, it's so like, it's a different level of like cringy. It's just so like. Disturbing. Just disturbing. Yeah. That he. Thought that that was okay. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm really pushing that like this was a like mental kind of illness situation. Because I don't know how any person, like any logical person could think that this was actually like right. Or this mm-hmm. is like a good idea from like start to finish. I mean. Even to, like, and then, like, because you and I both have siblings, so can you imagine, like, growing up with your sibling? And I know you have a sister, and I have a sister, too. Can you imagine growing up in, like, let's say we had brothers, and um, they were in, like, we were raised in the same household, but, like, not in the same household. Yeah. That would be, that would be so weird. That's weird, because it's like. But then again, they were all brought up separately and only around each other that's right so like because they were homeschooled Mm. so they have no indication of like what's normal Normal. normalcy okay that makes sense i didn't even think about that they have no concept of what's normal yeah they're just brainwashed in this little bubble so (sighs) in their mind they might be like i would like to meet them but this is how things are yeah so okay now when you put it that way if you see something like being done and it's like i'm like you and i may find it unusual to that person it could be normal yeah that makes a lot of sense especially if you were brought up that way you yeah. know like there are some people who enjoy eating pig feet it's a very southern thing you know what that is i view that as obviously normal like when i see people see it but somebody else that may see like someone eating like crawfish or like pig feet they're like wait what's happening yeah and yeah. it's like well okay you didn't grow up in the, you, you mm-hmm. know so like not to reference it to like pig feet and crawfish but just kind of like okay well this makes sense this is a food that i see normal but other people may not you mm-hmm. know but i just my heart just goes out to those like victims in this family yeah so that's like a absolutely i applaud them for being able to go on with their lives yeah after this and being so brave to like Mm -hmm. even want to talk to like some of the media about it is like i believe there's a woman that wrote a book oh yeah you're um, right and interviewed two of his daughters or his wife Mm -hmm. yeah his uh i think his wife and then didn't she also interview one of the sons too i can't remember exactly but and she like took them in she actually had them live with her which Oh, that's pretty that's dope. Pretty incredible. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I, I don't like, I don't blame her. This is like such a traumatic experience. And then, the one thing that I didn't, I forgot to uh, chat with you about or ask you. It's like at that point, what the fuck does a mom do? Does a mom all of a sudden become a mom then? What do you mean? Like, um, like once the dad like is taken to jail, mm-hmm. like so it's like now as she was not like allowed to like talk to her kids now are they like you know i mean some of her kids were adults already yeah um but i guess i mean i would assume that she would try to start being able to take ownership of her children and grandchildren at that point i did see an article that talked like briefly about how like she um Oh my gosh, there was like two different articles. One said that she was like still standing by him, and the other one said that like she didn't know any, all the things that he was doing was wrong. I do not believe that. Like, you know, right from wrong. But contrary, she was young when she, when they yeah. got like together. She was like, what, 14 or something? She was eight. Oh, eight, yeah, when he started, yep. Mo- uh, sexually so uh, it's all her. that she knows too. Ah, oh, that's right. And so she probably wouldn't know that. 
it's not appropriate for him to oh. start messing with her children <sighs> because it's what happened to her. God, this is such a fucked up case. Yeah, it's definitely a mind fuck. Yeah, sure. like... And it's just gruesome <sighs> and gross. It's so creepy and gross. Oh, my... God. I. That's yeah. it. That's my two cents on that. Yeah, oh. so... This is our fifth story. Yeah, our fifth story. <laughs> and we're really, um, yeah, uh, yeah, giving y'all a dark one for yeah. this one. Yeah, we gave you guys a dark one. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, feel free to, again, leave a review. And, yeah, th- again, thank you for listening. You can find us on, again, Instagram, Twitter, um, we are not on Snapchat, and I almost said Facebook, which we are not on, but Instagram, <laughs> Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. And, yeah, thank you guys for listening to our um, our podcast. Fifth episode. Fifth episode. Again, Spotify, Google, and uh, Apple Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. And thank you again for listening. I'm Jenny Wilson, and... I'm Isabel Ansella, and we're in the shade. Thank you, guys. Bye.